Welcome to the essence meditation. Maybe the meditation of all meditations. The meditation guiding you right back to your truest self. You can close your eyes and come sit in a comfortable position. Preferably with your back up straight, either sitting on a chair with your back supported or not. And you could also do this meditation laying down. Yet I would prefer to do it sitting up so you stay awake and aware and you get the most out of this. So when you find yourself in a comfortable position, close your eyes and bring your attention to your breath. Now in a moment we'll be counting our breath and I will be counting for you so you can just follow my count and we will be inhaling for the count of four, holding the breath for the count of seven and exhaling for eight seconds long. Now let's breathe out and then inhale for one, two, three, four, hold it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale for one, two, three, four, hold it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and breathe out. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathing in for one, two, three, four, hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and breathe out for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now continue this breathing in your own rhythm, counting the breath in your own mind, inhaling for the count of four, holding the breath for the count of seven and exhaling for the full count of eight seconds. And then you can finish your last round of counting your breath and let your breath fall back into its natural rhythm. Now in a moment I will guide you to return to your essence through letting go of that which you are not through peeling off the layers like you would peel off the layers of an onion getting down to its very essence its core so let's start by letting go of your body you are not your body you have a body let go of your body You are not your mind and you are not your thoughts. You have a mind and you have thoughts. 
Let go of your mind. Let go of your thoughts. You are not your emotions. You have emotions. Emotions pass through you. So let go of your emotions. You are not your name or the roles you play in life. Let go of your name. Let go of your roles. You are not your gender. You are not what other people think of you. And you are not who other people think who you are. Now let go of that. You are not your story. You are not what has happened to you. And you are even not who you are becoming. You are not that. So for this moment, let go. You are not your personality, for even your personality is ever-changing. Let go. Let go of your personality. Now when you've let go of all of these things temporarily, what remains? If you let go of all of that, what remains? Now focus on that which remains. Focus on that inner stillness, that presence, that experience or feeling or being that you may not be able to give words to, but that feels authentically you. That part of you that maybe feels like home. Your most authentic self. And that thing that can be touched nor grasped That which has no start, that which has no beginning and no ending. For it always is. That which is unscratchable, unable to feel hurt. That which always is. Some have tried to name it and come up with words like consciousness or spirit or love. Some may call it energy, but you don't have to name it. For every word and every name is a limitation in itself for something that is limitless, that has no beginning and no ending, that is always there, always present, always observing. Now let's bring all of your attention to that essence. to the real you. And stay present with that essence for a couple of minutes in silence.
how does it feel to be connected to this part of you, to the real you, the part of you that doesn't need, doesn't want, isn't hurt, and can you bring some of this essence into your daily life? By practicing this meditation on a regular basis, you will find yourself that after 30 days of consistent practice, you will feel more connected to yourself. You will find yourself more peaceful in situations that were previously triggering. And you may even have found a new meaning to a life, a better and deeper understanding of who you are and what the world around you truly is. I encourage you to practice this meditation for 30 days straight or longer if you wish to have even more results. And now you can choose to either stay in meditation, staying connected to that essence, that which is never lost, or to take three deep inhales, letting go on the exhale. And then after those three exhalations, blinking your eyes open, and bring your essence into your physical world, into your physical life. From my essence to yours, I love you. Have a beautiful rest of your day.
greetings. I am white one. Hello, my friend, a warm welcome to you, of course. I come to you now, as always, with a single intent, which is to offer my service, and in that I hope you will find the wisdom and the clarity and the reassurance and the inspiration and the healing and the love that is relevant to all who will listen. So tell me, dear friend, how can I serve you on this occasion? Always my greatest desire and intent to encourage, to uplift, to inspire, but maybe most of all, to comfort and to reassure. This is not only my most sacred intent, but the sacred intent of all who wish to communicate now from the world of light with our friends who are incarnated on earth and facing this time of momentous change, unlike anything they have ever been through. So all of you, dear friends, we could say are in a place without a map. And that sometimes seems a scary place to be. But when you're in a place without a map, the only thing you can do is to turn your eyes heavenward and allow yourself to be guided by the stars. Well, we are not stars, but we are part of a collective also, involved in the evolution of humanity, in the healing of the collective, in the awakening of the collective. And so we come now to you at this moment. So yes, what we see is happening. Many people in the situation of being in a place without a map feel themselves lacking the tools, the knowledge, the understanding, to be able to take back control of their lives. The fear and security people feel is because they're not in control. There's so much uncertainty, but when such a situation exists, what better time can there be than to remind yourselves of faith, of having trust, that this is something that has been programmed within your deepest knowing for as long as you've been in your present bodies, that this time would come. It's a shock to the system when it comes because suddenly your reality is turned upside down. But we want to remind you that you are reminded by your deepest knowing that this is part of the plan for you. And there is nothing to fear. It's easy for me to say. And when there is fear, then let your reflex be to go within and find the place within that is not a knowing fear, the place of you within you that is love. So what greater resource could you wish for than to be reminded and to know that within you is that sacred spot of fearlessness, of absolute faith and trust, of deep knowing that you have elected to be part of this movement, this transformation, this healing on planet Earth, to all in your own way, not only liberate yourself, but to liberate others by your example. What can there be to fear? Perhaps it's time for me to remind you that everything is love, including yourselves. When I come into the presence of any of my friends, that's all I see, love, connection, truth. And if there's fear, and don't judge the fear, it's all right to fear. Don't forget you are human. We don't forget you are human. So there's no reason for you to forget that you are human. But what you may call fear is a movement of energy activated by a change in your energy system, like the wind blowing through the trees. Allow the fear. Don't argue it out of the way. Don't try to rationalize it. Don't negotiate with it. Allow it. And to allow it is to love it. And by allowing your fear, it has no argument to fight against the present reality. So when you allow it, it can become quiet. It can join you in the trusting that all is well. This is not a time, dear friends, to be superhuman. This is not a time to be a saint. This is a time to be deliciously human. And allowing yourself to be deliciously human, you're preparing the ground by acceptance of all that is you to receive the divine light into you. 
that that light which then is one with you will play its part in the transformation. And I'm going to use a word that nobody ever likes to hear, and that is patience. It might not happen overnight, but there is coming a moment, a time, which can be definitely a turning point. And when this date arrives in the coming time, then as it has been celebrated for thousands of years, before there was any of the belief systems that you now have in your world, before there was any religions, there was this day that was celebrated and acknowledged and recognized and treated as the most sacred. And so on your solstice day, maybe a time to connect to the most ancient of times, the most ancient experience you have ever known on earth, the cradle of your human existence. And as then and now, to know yourself to be a part of that creation. Maybe in that way, you'll be able to free yourself of some of the conditioning that your belief systems have imposed upon you, from which your fears come. Many belief systems have served to separate you from the truth. It's created dualistic thinking. Beliefs in right and wrong and good and bad. In those most ancient of times, before any existed, these value systems did not exist. So maybe it's a beautiful time, dear friends, to imagine yourself back in the earliest times of your human existence, when you can celebrate your innocence, when you can feel and know and be reminded of the inseparability of you to all of creation. Even as recently as when I was incarnated in the human body of white boy. Amongst my people then, from the biggest buffalo to the smallest ant, from the biggest mountain to the smallest grain of sand, these were our relations. And that was a continuation of a relationship to all that is, that has existed long before any of your other belief systems were there. This is a way back to source a way back to the original self, a way back to the time before there was ever a need to create masks, layers, personas, defense mechanisms that would conceal the true you. Any of you possess in your home something that you call a dimmer switch and you turn it up and the light becomes brighter. That's the simplest way to describe what we perceive and what will happen. As you discover that within you, there is the capacity to let the spirit, the light which is you, shine more brightly. There have been many conditionings that have meant you've had to hide your light. But now you can't resist that process which is supported by the inflow of energy from the cosmos to allow the dimmer switch to be turned on full blast. And it's not because even that you're having a conscious intent to do so, it's something that's happening automatically. Just as when the sun, the warmth of the sun shines in your garden and the flowers begin to grow. So is the warmth of divine love that shines upon you comes into the earth plane, there's no way that those who are ready to do so can resist their growing as well, their increasing of their light bodies. So it's happening automatically. And so people are going through changes in their lives, things are happening, maybe which they would never have wanted to happen or the egos wouldn't have wanted to happen, but this is the effect of the light. This is the effect of the cooperation between the soul and the forces of light. 
And it's like your souls are saying, bring it on, God, bring it on. Meanwhile, your egos are saying, oh, no, I don't want change. Let things stay as they are. I'm frightened. Yeah. But it's happening. You can't resist it. And the more you do try to resist, the more painful it will be. Because it has to happen. Yes. So the down flow, the download of divine love is awakening people to a capacity within themselves to experience love. But it's not even about being a loving human being. It's about dissolving even identification with the human self and feeling a part of one heart. A heart that never opens or closes because it doesn't have any movement. It just is love. And that's the movement from the personal to the transpersonal love. That's the movement from being a loving human being to a human being that is love. That's the movement from defining yourself, even with the words, the love that I am. The love that I am welcomes and greets you, and the love that you are. This is what must happen, that all names, labels, definitions of difference and separation in the name of love, that they go and replaced in that experience of true oneness. And that's where freedom lies. There is no freedom in personalizing love. There is no freedom in even understanding the nature of the human heart, beautiful as it is, but which is something which can open and close. That's the human heart. What you are talking about and what you are hoping for is the divine heart, which lives in everything and you live in it. That doesn't mean to say you have to completely abandon your humanness. The human heart is beautiful for lots of functions. It's nice to fall in love, but it's with the human heart. But still there needs to be the awareness of the real heart, which is the source, which is unchanging, unaffected by any external event. That is freedom. And it is in you. It's not something you have to reach or to gain. It's just reminding yourself, it is you. It's in you, it is you, and you are in it. If there's one focus of reflection or contemplation, let it be just that. There's no how that I need to apply to this. There's no question I need to seek an answer to because it already is. This is awakening. This is the awakening to become what you've truly always been. But that human self, has sometimes concealed it. The layers of programming and conditioning have concealed it. And with that, with that feeling and realization comes the greatest gift of all, which is peace. And most specifically, peace of mind. Words don't say it. I hope those of my dear friends who are listening will feel even beyond what I am saying, what they are hearing and processing through their minds and their hearing systems, they will experience above all the space behind it, the vibration. The moment I would talk about these things, the mind becomes engaged. 
and the mind tries to understand and the mind will filter it through different levels of understanding and resistance, acceptance and so on. But love as a vibration cannot be resisted. How can love resist itself? And peace is all around. Peace is there whenever you wish to listen to it, in silence. Silence is the language of God. I would say to my friends, listen. And maybe out of that silence, you would hear the word of God speaking to you through your own highest and deepest knowing, which you will recognize as absolute truth. Put your attention on any part of your physical body, any limb, any organ, and it's at peace, it's silent. Go in nature and listen. Where does the sound of the bird come from? It comes out of silence. That is the language of God, the language of truth. If I was only to use human language to express it, well, those of my friends who are listening might have to plan to spend many, many hours sitting where they now are, if I was able to do justice to those subjects with words. And so you have the expression, the peace which passes all understanding. The mind doesn't understand peace. The mind doesn't understand love. And the mind will find its peace when you confront it with absolute truth. And it has nothing to say. It cannot react. There's nothing to contradict, nothing to analyze, nothing to doubt. That's the greatest silencer of the mind. Sometimes my friends will ask me, why will, how do I keep my mind quiet? It's so simple. Confront it with truth. Absolute truth. And the mind in its own way will bow down before absolute truth and will become its servant and your servant. And then the battle is won. I just want to remind my friends that when you hear of things that the human mind would judge as being not so good and not so easy and sad, look a little bit deeper and you will find grace operating in that event. Grace is operating everywhere. And if you can't find it immediately, then go even deeper until you find the grace, until you understand that grace is operating in every human life to bring that human to freedom and to realization of their oneness with perfect love and God. Everything is a grace. Even though the mind may rebel at the idea but what does the mind know? So my prayer is for all my friends at this time that they will awaken to the truth of grace operating in their lives, bringing them to the experience of true freedom and oneness and everlasting peace. love to you, I say God is in you, is one with you, peace be with you.
Hello there, beautiful people. This is Binky and Tyn and Chico from Amsterdam. We are very happy to be part of this marathon meditation on the 21st of December, this auspicious day where Jupiter and Saturn align and it feels like the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And so we will do a meditation for you. Hopefully Binky will play some hang drum. Not sure if that'll work with little Chico, but if she doesn't, then you know that that was a good idea, which, you know, <laughs> didn't work out, but no worries. It'll be a beautiful meditation. So the meditation we're going to do is a meditation on source, because if you can connect or reconnect to source, then automatically you are able to catch those really, really high vibes that are now coming to the planet, which will rejuvenate your system and bring you back to your original state. But before we tune into source, before we tap into these high energies, it's important to also be grounded. So I'd like to ask you to close your eyes and sit in a relaxed fashion, in a way that is comfortable for you. And then just breathe a couple of times deeply from your belly. And with every out breath, you relax a little deeper, you relax a little more. Feeling the earth beneath your feet or beneath the pillow, the cushion you're sitting on. Allowing the earth to carry you. She is your mother after all. The one who loves you dearly. And you as the child, you don't have to do anything to prove yourself to be worthy. She loves you anyway, so just relax. And with every out breath, allow yourself to sink a little deeper into your body and reconnect with the earth, feeling grounded feeling secure. Just breathe and be aware of your body relaxing, becoming a little more heavy. And in order to relax even more, it might help to consciously relax your jaws. The jaws are the most powerful muscles in the body and whenever we're tense, we tend to clamp our jaws together. But now just do the opposite. Open your mouth a little, relax your tongue, relax your jaw and allow yourself to sink even deeper into the body, into the earth. And if there's parts of your body where there's tension, then use your breath to breathe through that tension. Allowing that part of your body to also relax. And 
also give your mind, your brain a break. Relax your mind, relax your brain. And when you feel your body is completely relaxed, then don't worry if there are thoughts or feelings or emotions still spinning through your mind. Just allow them to float by without trying to stop or change anything. You are the one who is watching the thoughts. You are not the thoughts. Your thoughts are like clouds on the horizon, very far away, floating by. Just observe them. And it can help to consciously breathe through your heart, to feel connected to your heart, to your heart center. When you breathe through your heart, you can feel that. You step out of duality, out of all the conflicting thoughts or feelings or emotions. And you come back to center, to this place of wholeness, of peace. relaxing even more. So now you're connected to the earth, your body is relaxed. You are aware of your mind, but not trying to stop or change anything. In this quiet center space of the heart. And now allow yourself to reconnect to source. This is not difficult, this is not something new. You are already connected to Source. You just need to 
become aware of it again, to feel that you are never alone, you are never separate from source, you're never separate from life. So with every breath, open your heart a little more, like a flower opening its petals to the sun. And allow the sunlight, the light of source, to flow into your heart. Just enjoy the beautiful vibe of these rays of golden sunlight, new energy, beautiful energy, rejuvenating you, filling you with love, with peace, with joy. Just surrender and open yourself like a flower to the sun.
with every in-breath you inhale the beautiful energy from source, from the sun, a beautiful light that permeates your whole body, every cell of your organs are being rejuvenated with this beautiful light. It's like your whole system is being upgraded. Just by tuning in to this highest frequency. It's like your body is like a receiver from a radio. Very subtly tuning in to those highest of all frequencies. Restoring your whole system, bringing it back to its original nature. allow that healing light to flow through your body into the earth. It's like you become a bridge between heaven and earth. A superconductor to allow the highest possible frequencies to flow into Mother Earth.
slowly in your own time bring your awareness back and when you feel ready open your eyes or just remain where you are for joining the next session on this most auspicious day.